Hello and welcome to Ant Mini's Technology Focus, a video series on new technology in the world of radiology and medical imaging. My name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. Uh, we have with us today Michael Watterson. He is CEO of Radialis Medical. Uh, they're a company that's developing a new pet camera for organ-based imaging. Uh, it's a little bit different than the whole body pet systems that you're used to seeing. Uh, Radialis in September announced that it was applying for FDA clearance of the system, so uh, you may uh, see the uh, system on the market sometime soon. Michael, thanks for being with us today. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity, Brian. It's great to be here. Sure, our, pl our pleasure. Uh, first off, what, what can you tell us about uh, Radialis? Yeah, Radialis was formed uh, to develop and sell organ-targeted PET systems. You know, it's a, it's a really exciting time to be in molecular imaging. There are fantastic new radio tracers coming out all the time. And uh, we were really trying to look at the combination of that and being able to leverage uh, the advent of silicon photomultipliers, which is really opening up opportunities to do things with PET cameras that you just couldn't do before were not possible. So, And the um, silicon photomultiplier tubes, how does that compare to maybe some of the, the standard traditional PET? technology. Yeah, the, the, this is really the next generation of PET technologies around being able to do the light detection on the chip, whereas before you needed to use a vacuum tube to do that work. And it's really uh, been able to do, uh, you do a lot more uh, sensitive detection, a lot uh, higher density sensors um, than you're able to do when you have to accommodate those vacuum tubes. I think kind of like the revolution that happened with uh, displays when we moved from CRTs to being able to do uh, light production on chips. Um, we've got the same thing now happening on detection, which has been great. Okay. And, and how long has the company been around and how long have you been working on this technology? Um, yeah, so we've been uh, working on it for the last few years. It's uh, um, been a connection, was founded in a conjunction with the uh, Lakehead University um, to really leverage the work that was being done on the physics of silicon photomultipliers, you know, and apply it to, to radiology. Great. And so why the decision to focus on organ-based imaging? Now, I'm assuming that your, your system is going to be maybe a little bit smaller than a whole body camera. You know, most of the uh, most of the pet cameras that we see out there are, are designed for, you know, whole, whole body imaging. Yeah, it's a, it really the, when the company was getting started, it was a collaboration between uh, Dr. Resnick and Dr. Uh, Weinberg, who had both been involved in uh, molecular Im imaging of uh, breast cancer. And we're looking at the, you know, advent of silicon photomultipliers and how would this apply within that world. So it really was part of, you know, their uh, perspective um, to begin with. And it ends up that it, it's, uh, you know, fantastically applicable because we're able to have a high density detector arrays um, that we can get, you know, very close to the organ of interest and really do things that are uh, very difficult to do if you're also trying to scan a whole body. Okay. And so, and what sort of organs are we talking about here? Yeah, it's quite a quite a range. So, um, given the background of the founders, obviously we are you know we are studying breast cancer. Um, we do uh, also though have you know con configured the system so that it's flexible. And, you know, and with uh, beds in different positions, can really try to accommodate anything that um, you know you may be able to uh, be interested in looking at when you know the area that you're looking for. Cool. Well, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at some images. Um, you were uh, you're kind enough to share. Uh, some images with us. So let's yeah, uh, take so a look. So these images are from our initial uh, breast cancer uh, pilot study. But um, uh, as you can see, we've also been able to uh, image uh, um, different uh, uh, areas of the body. So here um, we so got the, this is the yeah. scanner. Yeah, this is the scanner. And so um, the uh, the detector heads are the, at the front of the scanner. Um, those, uh, the two detectors are full, um, you know, end to end with the detection. And so uh, the whole head can also be rotated. Um, and this can accommodate someone uh, standing between them. Um, and uh, also we've used that uh, in conjunction with a bed so that you can lie and, and place your head between them. Um, this almost, so looks, almost looks like mammography paddles. Yeah, exactly. They do look a lot like mammography panels and we've just been able to give them some more flexibility and positioning to be able to be used you know, for other applications as well. Great. So this is our you know, pilot uh, brain image um, taken uh, from a, while lying between the two um, sensors. And uh, you know, we're really pleased with what we're seeing initially. We're going to continue to do additional software improvements um, to be able to do some more tomography work um, for this type of imaging. Um, we're also going to be um, uh, looking at uh, you know, integrating more of the positioning. But it's uh, you know, what we're getting from the um, range of sensitivity from these sensors has been really uh, uh, flexible in terms of the applications that we can look at. 
Mm-hmm. And so, Again, it looks so like a heart. That, yeah, to the point that yeah, we now have a cardiac image here too. Um, obviously, PET and cardiac imaging is very interesting right now, and there's a lot of focus around um, around this area. And uh, we do feel that there's these really exciting uh, places where a lot of innovation is happening um, that could really be uh, helped um, by having uh, sensors that are really tailored to this kind of getting very close to the target. Great, great. Now this is uh, from the breast study. Um, in this case, this is looking at uh, our ability to uh, differentiate um, within a tumor. So we have a very good ability to discriminate different levels of uh, uptake. If you see on the upper right image, um, the hot spots uh, with uh, other uptake around it. In this particular case, um, it was uh, invasive cancer that was kind of surrounded in an area that had a fair amount of um, uh, DCIS. Um, and so you can see that on the um, MRI, um, you know, which is a very sensitive modality for this type of imaging. It's, it's, um, it has difficulty differentiating between these different types of, uh, of uptake. Um, whereas if you think about when you go to biopsy this, you really want to be able to find, you know, the most aggressive areas and make sure that you're getting those covered. Um, and we were able to confirm the layout of this kind of, uh, of the uh, lesion um, when we looked at the pathology uh, following mastectomy. So, we're, you know, we are seeing this confirmation that we've got these invasive areas that with, um, with, um, uh, DCIS with, uh, in situ um, uh, regions around them. Yep. And then what do we got here? So here's uh, us looking with the same patient, same day um, in a whole body um, PET CT as well as in our scanner. And so the whole body CT would be the blue ones. Yeah, the blue ones. And we already blew it up so that we can kind of get into there. And you can see the advantage of being right next to the with the organ with a large sensor. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we're able to get a lot more differentiation in this case within the tumor. And it's, um, uh, you know, we're, that, we're able to use that to uh, see smaller objects. Um, you start to see the definition of the nipple here, which is you, you can't pick up in the whole body. And, and your, your image is the one on the, uh, the, the, or on the right. Yeah. The right, red yeah. one on, on the right. Yeah. The right. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Um, well, um, so you're, you've applied for, uh, FDA 510k clearance and yeah. you know, the FDA is supposed to take 90 days if they do, nobody really knows. Um, when you do get clearance, uh, what's your plans for commercializing the system? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So soon, <laughs> I think was what you said at the beginning, which I would <laughs> agree, I would characterize it as soon. Um, uh, we will be, um, you know, we'll be going to market with the device for clinical applications. But in the, in the meantime, we are doing our, um, our clinical demonstration studies. Um, so we are very interested in talking with people that have um, uh, things that they think they can, you know, really use this device for to make a difference in clinical care. And uh, we're rolling those out um, as we are, you know, pursuing the 510K process with the uh, FDA. Perfect. Well, uh, Michael, we'll look forward to seeing the system on the market sometime soon. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll look forward to hopefully see some of you at uh, RSNA coming up this yeah, month. Let's hope so. All right. Well, Michael, thanks so much for being with us today. Good luck to Radialis and uh, signing off for AntMini.com. My name is Brian Casey.